Hi, I'm Heidi Jacobs of Slap Sip Together, and this is my boy, Carver. Last video you saw us put together the CR-10, that's behind us. <laughs> we had a lot of fun doing it, and some of you asked me for a follow-up video that talked about whether or not I liked it. Was it worth getting? What do you think? Should we do that video? <laughs> I think we should. this unit is that everything pretty much happens within your control box and you can tell it how hot that you want the bed you can tell it where you want your XYZ access to start with you can control everything from this box with this little knob you can also in the middle of the print pause it in the case you need to add more filament this device is really great too for people that really like to tinker because you can print things to add to it, you can program it to do different things, you can even use Raspberry Pi to set up a device that tells it when you're running out of filament. And it's like plug and play. You just scroll down to this, the file you want to print, you select it, it heats up to the standard temperatures for whatever filament you told the machine you were going to use, and once both of those temperatures get reached, it automatically centers itself or goes to its zero spot and then it starts printing. The other really easy thing to do with this printer is load it. I know that sounds really silly, but let me just zoom in here. So you've got essentially a clamping mechanism here. And you push this open, well, you squeeze it closed and it opens up the orifice to feed the line into. And then you feed the line and it goes all the way down to the print head. Once the temperature gets reached, there's these little mechanisms in there that kind of force feed the wire into the tube and push it out into the hot nozzle end. The hot nozzle end heats up the plastic and then it deposits it on your bed. The PLA that this device comes with is, you know, a cheap, basic, white PLA. It did fine, and I'd probably buy it again if I was just printing some really simple things. But I did take some advice from a couple of 3D printing enthusiasts, and I did pick up a, a spool of Hatchbox. This is a little bit more expensive. It's about $25, $26 a roll. But it's a pretty decent roll, and I've been printing on it. I've been printing with it for a couple of weeks now, and I'm only now about halfway through the roll. So that's exciting. The reason I wanted heavier duty material was because I was making cookie cutters, and I didn't want to have to cre keep reprinting them after every use. I'm a little hard on things. Also, with the CR-10, there's a really active community just for this printer alone, which was another selling point for me on why I decided to go with this device rather than maybe one that was $100 cheaper or smaller or self-contained. It's that there are very passionate people that print with this device and love it and love sharing their knowledge and love helping newbie printers like myself do what I'm doing, learning how to think in a way that I've never had to think before. Number one, bed adhesion. I was putting a ton of glue down and then I was getting too much adhesion, or I wasn't putting enough glue down and I wasn't getting any adhesion, or I was putting the glue down too soon, it was drying, and then the print bed would finally heat up in time and then it would start printing and I'd end up with a nest of mess. It was very frustrating. So I went ahead and I ordered this 3D that's what their the company name is, it's TH3RD print bed, and it's a self-adhesive bed. It's not sticky to the touch. It just, it, it has like a grip to it that allows the filament to stick, and I love it, it's great. Headache number two. Which way do these knobs turn? In order to 
raise and lower your bed, you have to twist these knobs. And I've upgraded them with a 3D print that I found on Thingiverse that basically tells me which way is up. You don't understand how important that is when you're talking about millimeters of increments, meaning the difference between your filament laying down evenly and having bed issues. Lifesaver, and I guarantee you it should be the first thing that you print. I'm not even kidding. I went like weeks without having knobs that tell me which way to turn for up and which way to turn for down. Headache number three, leveling your bed when your glass is not completely flat. Corner, 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 corner. And then I would center it to the middle and make sure that it was level all over using the paper trick but I could never get it super level. So I was getting distortions on my prints and I was getting so frustrated. Why is this happening? Here, the glass was not level and that was causing all of my headaches or most of them because even though my corners were all reading the same height, depth or whatever, it was not level in the center. There are a lot of examples of really cool engineering marbles those really aren't what I'm printing. <laughs> Last week I worked on trying to get my friend's logo as a cookie cutter and that worked out pretty well until I tried to shrink it in my application, my Cura application. I didn't realize that when I shrunk it I would end up with thinner walls than what I had originally engineered. It just, I didn't put two and two together. I, I should have known. I should have known! <sighs> but I can still use this stamp as a stamp. It's fine. Uh, the, the lettering came out just fine. I've got enough detail in there from the, the ship itself. So it should be a pretty cool stamp. Just won't be a cookie cutter. But that's okay because nobody liked you as a cookie cutter anyway, Mr. Boat. I also made these little stamps for the bottom of my mugs. Thingiverse to pull a lot of files that are interesting to me that I want to try printing, including Baby Groot. The thing about Thingiverse is that you can tip the designer, or the artist, or the engineer, whoever, whatever they label themselves as. You get a little bit of opportunity to interact with them, talk to them about your struggles with their file, what improvements you might suggest making. You can even ask them questions. Last week I picked these up from Thingiverse. It turned out pretty good. So this is a, the, the, all three are two piece cookie cutters. This one doesn't seem to, yeah, it's just gonna stay as one piece. This one is pretty good. Let's talk software. So this can get a little bit tricky and tedious, especially if you aren't used to using any kind of software, even things like Illustrator or Photoshop. Photoshop has some pretty cool rendering tools in the latest versions and you can import vectors into Photoshop as paths and create layers. That's how I made my cookie cutters. But there's more advanced software that's available out there that you can use to really, really refine your essentially 3D sculptures. Fusion 360 has a program for student learners that you can get the software for free to learn it, which is really great, especially if you're cash strapped and a student. There's also some other software out there that is a little bit pricier, but it's worth learning if this is a direction you want to go with your career or with your artwork. Some people get a little bit confused about the difference between 3D rendering software and what maybe a slicing software like Cura is. 3D rendering software is the software that you use to actually create your model. It's what you're using to either sculpt the piece, or draw the piece, or extrude the piece. The slicing software essentially just does that. It slices it. It preps it for print. It's one of those things that is complementary to your rendering software and complementary to 
than your 3D printing device. So in conclusion, would I do this again? Yeah, I think so. Would I buy this printer again? It's a good starter printer. I might even buy this printer again as a non-starter. For realsies. It's a good printer. I can't. Okay. You want to say bye? No. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to say bye? Bye. No.